Hi, welcome to another Assimilate Scratch demo. I'm Michael Forrest, and I'll be presenting Avid Round Tripping in this uh, tutorial. Basically, what I'm doing is I've got a series of dailies that have come in, and I don't have time to do much else other than uh, get them prepped for 1920, 1080 frame size, metadata burn in, and get them out the door for uh, editorial to start working with. Now later, I'd like to be able to go back and actually grade these shots and prep them a little bit better and maybe output at a higher quality and replace the original shots, so avid round tripping. So first thing I have is I have a construct here and if I go to my output, all I've done is I've taken the original um, R3D 4K files, I've downsized them for 1920 by 1080, and then I've added a metadata burn-in that just has a title up top here the group name and then the source file name source time code and then lastly I'm sending these out as 1080p 24 DNX HD 36 with a couple of um, channels of audio okay so when I go to, to my output node and I process this what I end up with in my finder is a couple of different folders so we'll look at day one graded after that's what I'm going to attempt to uh, replace these original files with if I pop open the Donko folder, I've got my day one construct in here. And then inside of that, I've got a series of seven folders that correlate to my seven slots in my construct. So if I look at this first folder, inside of there, I've got a, another folder that I told Scratch to generate that has the original source red name here, which is in case I need that, meta, that data for anything. And then inside of that, I've got an AAF file, an XML file, and two MXF files. This bigger one, of course, is going to be our video MXF file, and then the smaller one would be a, it's a single track of audio in this case. So I need to get all these files moved into my Avid uh, Media Composer. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to use the uh, search function, either Windows or Mac, it doesn't matter, and I'm going to look for MXF files. And I want to look just in this um, Danko folder. So I'm going to take all these and drag them into my Avid Media Composer folder and copy those over. And what you have is basically just um, when you have an Avid Media Composer, it sets up a, file, a folder for its media files called Avid Media Files. Inside of that, it's got an MXF folder, and inside of that, it'll have a series of numbered folders. Okay, um, You can make as many of these as you want, number them how you want, and uh, they're available that way just so you can keep everything organized. So I've dropped all my MXF files into the number one folder here. Next thing I want to do is get my AAF files into my actual bin. So I'll type do the same process, type in AAF, and then we'll highlight those files, go to Media Composer, and in the appropriate bin, I've got an offline bin here. I'm just gonna take those files and drag and drop them right in there. And then what Media Composer will do when you go back into it, it's gonna scan the drive and link up any uh, MXF media it finds to the appropriate AAF metadata. So if I double click on these files, you see that I've got the scratch around trip, I've got my burn in, and these are the uncorrected files, but they are 1920 by 1080. So now these are ready to start editing with. So if I just want to punch a couple of shots in here, like so, and then I can go through and add effects, you know, flops, uh, flip flops, dissolves, wipes, whatever I might want to add in. Okay, so I can build up a pretty extensive timeline with all kinds of effects that may be hard to duplicate in, um, in online without a lot of time, such as the native Avid Illusion effects, Sapphire effects, um, just speed ramps, all those kind of things. So what I can do is I built a more extensive timeline just um, to save a little bit of time here. If I open up this folder, I've got this Danko cut already done, so it's got a fade up, some white flashes, some speed ramps, a title, and then just a series of cuts and dissolves on different tracks. So rather than attempt to rebuild this entire timeline in a finishing system, um, if I'm, for instance, just going out for broadcast, um, the quality of the media composer may be good enough, but I can help it along by prepping better quality media in Scratch, better quality base media that's going to sit below all of this, um, the effects and the metadata on this timeline. So back into Scratch, I have a second output called graded. 
And same thing, it's 4K red files that are down res to 1080. And then I've got a final DNX output, and all that is is uh, 1080.24, DNX 175X, which means 10-bit, and then a couple of audio tracks. So same process, um, I would take my last node, process it, and it would create another set of files in my render folder, or wherever I tell it to put them. In this case, I called it day one graded. Same, um, same seven subfolders, and in subfolder number one, I've got an AF, an XML, an MXF, and then another, and you can see this one's quite a bit larger, 2.69 gigs this time. Um, as opposed to 553 megabytes on the DNX 36 material. So same process, uh, I want to basically open up the folder, do a search for any MXF media in the day one graded, and then I want to drag and drop this into my uh, number two folder here. Drop it over there. And then once that's done, I need again to go find my AAF files in that same folder. So back in, uh, in Media Composer, I've got another bin that I made called Graded, and I'm just going to drop my AAF files into that, like so. And then if I load these into the source monitor, you'll see now I've got a graded file here without any kind of burn-in. So these are my... DNX 175X files with no burn in and they have a grade on them. The next thing I want to do is I want to replace the media being used in this cut with all the effects with this new graded media. So I'll just move this bin over here. We're going to make a duplicate of, uh, of the cut, just I like to keep the original just in case. And we'll just rename this as Danko Graded. We'll drag it from the offline or the cut bin into the graded cut. So I've got it sitting in here. And then what I want to do is I want to make sure um, I don't select, I have nothing else selected in any other bins. So I'll just deselect in the offline bin. And I'm going to drag across all these files to highlight them. Right click on Danko uh, graded and I'm going to relink. Here in the middle of the relink property page, I've got the option to relink to selected items in all open bins. So that was why I wanted to make sure I only had items selected in this open bin. Another quick way you can do it, of course, is close um, bins that are not necessary. But I want to just leave it open in this case. And then I'm going to choose not to create a new sequence. You can if you need to, but in this case I don't. Click OK. And now when I drag and drop or put this into my source side, I can see I've got a cut that doesn't have any burn-ins and it has been graded. And it is DNX 175X media now as opposed to the 36 media. Okay, so I'll park this back at the uh, top, and then I'm just going to open up my offline. Oops, actually, it's my cuts. I'm going to drop the original cut here in the source side, and then I'll gang these two together just so you can see them kind of playing back at the uh, side by side. So that's the process of round tripping. This is great whether you're taking media through scratch and generating MXF files for Avid Media Composer, or if you're generating the media from Media Composer, MXF files from Media Composer on set with some other device, and then taking that into Scratch to add your burn-ins and whatnot, and then later you want the final quality graded processed files to relink under all the uh, all the complicated effects and builds and nests and all the rest of it that you have in your Media Composer. So it works really, really well. Hopefully this is of some use to you, and we'll uh, see you back here for the next tutorial.